welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. I actually sat down to film this video and realized I was wearing the same sweatshirt as last week, which, I mean, it's a sweatshirt. It's what goes on outside, but I was like, no, let's make it visually a little bit different since I'm recording in the same location. But who knows? My water cup could be the same color as last time. I would have to go back and check. Anyways, welcome back to my week three wrap up. Starting with what I read this week, I finished The Bone Ship's Wake and I have a review up for that already. I really enjoyed it. It was a great ending to this trilogy. RJ Barker nailed it for me. Uh, in fact, both my husband and I like this series and we are looking forward to buying it in here in the future and then sharing it with our children. Then right after that, I finished What Can We Offer You Tonight by Premi Mohammed. This was the novella that I was reading on my phone. And I believe before this wrap up, the review will be posted. I already have it filmed at this point. It was okay. <laughs> That's... Uh... I'm still not certain if I liked it or not. Like, I liked elements of it. I know that for certain. And the writing is beautiful, but the point of view style, I did not like. And I definitely could not have read a whole novel like this, but as this was a shorter work, I think Mohammed made a stylistic choice that works for this novella. It's just not a stylistic choice that I enjoy reading. And then next, because I wasn't quite ready to get back into my other novel, I read the Light Chaser by Peter F. Hamilton and Gareth L. Powell. And this is a space opera. And it's about a woman who is traveling from planet to colony to planet, collecting stories of the members of the society. It's like every thousand years, the Light Chaser comes to each of these worlds and she hands out what the uh, memory collars. So one person in each family line will get to wear this memory collar and it records their memories. And then when the light chaser comes, they give those collars back and then she gives out new ones. And then those memory collars are then given to the company that employs her to be used as entertainment on another world. I really enjoyed this concept. I will be filming a new releases review of this since this was published in 2021. And it's a space opera. Right then and there, you, you got me. Um, I, I enjoy almost all space opera I read, and I don't remember what I ended up reading this, but I know I really enjoyed it, and I would have been fine if this had been expanded a little bit further into a novel, given a, or fleshed out a little bit more, but as is, I still really enjoyed it. Then, I just barely finished this last night, Inherit the Flame by Megan O'Keefe. This is the third book in the Scorch Continent trilogy. It's the ending of the main conflict with Thracia Ganel, with the warlord of Thracia Ganel. I have no clue if I said that right, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm pronounced, it's going from how it's pronounced in my head to verbal. That's something, sometimes things sound better in our head than they do aloud. As this is a third book, I can't say too much about it without actually spoiling it. Maybe I'll do a should you read this series <laughs> review. I've seen other people do that. And the short answer is yes, you should. I still think my favorite character from this is Ripka. From the first book, she was the one of the watch captains in Aransa, where that book took place. And since what happened in the first book, she has now been working with Ditan Handin to take Thracia down. And I just, ah, uh, I really enjoy her. And this is a very unique world, kind of a steampunkish, a little bit since they have airships but at the same time, like set in a harsh desert climate. This is a lot of fun. I, I, I think it, this is another series that more people need to read. And if you like Velocity Weapon and that and her and the series there, it's the same author. It's just her fantasy versus sci-fi. Go check it out. <laughs> so for this week's TBR, since I had some time last night after finishing Inherit the Flame, I picked up I Love It When You Talk Retro, which is my physical TBR choice for the buzzword readathon. And this is about language, about words. So the author kind of defines retro talk as a slippery slope of puzzling allusions to past phenomena. And, you know, that leads to 
They're basically verbal artifacts that are hanging out in our conversation when the topic is no longer relevant or the context is not known. Um, an example he gave was, you're no longer in Kansas. For many Americans, we understand this phrase, phraseology, especially because of Wizard of Oz. And it basically just means that you're no longer, in, you, you move from a rural setting to a cosmopolitan one or a city. I mean, th th this is actually a term that you could argue has changed meaning uh, for the new, or for other generations now, where if you live in a city and you go to another country, well, I'm no longer in Kansas. You, you're in a new environment. That's kind of, a, I think, how it's mostly used nowadays. But that's just, again, do you know the context for these phrases? And so I'm having fun going through and learning the context and histories behind, like, hanging on a thread. That's one of the ones that I've read so far. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting story. I didn't know that that's how that one came to be. Or even there's a few terms he'll be like, oh, you know, this is the older term. This is the story for it. And then this is an alternate term that people sometimes used because it depended on context and what community you were in. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. And I know once I'm done with it, I'm going to share it with my parents because they both like language in that fashion as well. And then for my science fiction read, I am going to read Goliath by Tochi Anyabuchi. And this is an art copy that I won through a Goodreads giveaway. And this is like a dystopian world where the rich have gone off world into space colonies and now they're coming back but there's still people here who've never left and that they had left behind to deal with the disasters and consequences of their decisions so i this will be interesting and if i remember right, i believe that this comes out this week I'm just a little bit slow on getting around to reading it. This is my sci-fi read that I'm planning on. For my not writing wrap-up, the project I'm working on with my husband, I, I kind of slowed down in my reading, so I need to get farther because he has finished the six books we're supposed to be reading for the project, and I am on book five. I think I'm in the middle of book five. So I need to catch up so then we can fully discuss things together. On the other hand, David Wiley shared a link to a page that listed different anthologies and I was looking through that and I actually started having some ideas for one of those anthologies. So I started outlining a little bit, which isn't my typical way of doing things, but I figured you know, I'm trying something new kind of with a short story form. So in this one, I think I'm just having fun with like kind of outlining the story but there was definitely an anthology this summer that talked about dragons and I have a dragon story, short story that I've written. So I'm going to pull that out and polish that up and work on that so I can submit it. So thank you, David. And then for my other media wrap up, I have not been consuming a whole lot. Um, actually, I think the most memorable thing I've been consuming is some Disney mat or mashups. Blah, is some Disney mashups. I've been watching YouTube videos by Scott and... Reese Joe, I think is how you say her name. They're a married duo that sings together and they will take different songs and combine them. And a lot of the times they sing acapella. And there's two that I really liked. One was a Moana Hercules mashup. And I haven't actually seen Moana, but I just really like this mashup. And then the other one was the title of the song is Remember Me, and I'm not sure where it's from, but then the other one was from Tar- the other song was from Tarzan, and I really enjoyed that as well. For the reason why I liked them both, it kind of goes more back to a religious context for me. In my church, we believe that we lived with Heavenly Father before we came to Earth, and so both of the songs, to me, more feel like we're on this earthly journey, and then Heavenly Father's still waiting, and we're going to return to Him again, and we can still feel him throughout our lives leading and guiding us. So that's why I really enjoyed both of them. Again, they're Disney songs. That's not the meaning, I believe, that these two were putting these songs together. But as with anything that comes to art, books, poetry, movies, the person consuming the media brings their experiences onto the media as well. And thus has a new meaning apart from what the creators created. That's why we have discussions about media and art. So this that's what I have been 
taking from these songs based off of my experiences. And I am going to link them down below because they're just fun. If you like Disney music, you'll probably like them and you'll probably like the other mashups that they do on their channel. So that is what I have today. Thank you for joining me. How did your week three go?